SASE has been very uh, dynamic. It has been growing really fast. It has doubled its membership since 2008. And um, we have expanded uh, beyond uh, Europe and uh, the US with regional conferences. So I think we are on a growth path and we are doing very well. Yes, I think that the, um, one of the most exciting things about SASE now, building on what Akos just said, is that we're going to have our first major annual meeting in uh, Asia next year in uh, Kyoto, Japan, and I think that that's a, a really uh, exciting and smart move for the association to uh, start to draw in scholars from uh, that, you know, growing part of the world. So I think it's a really interesting and uh, exciting part of what's happening at SASE. We have started the Finance and Society Network a couple of years ago, and this is already one of the biggest networks. Uh, we started at it at a very, very good time in 2009, just after the financial crisis. And uh, we have seen lots of lots of good work uh, being generated through the network. Uh, we can be selective, uh, accepting submissions. And we also see lots of, lots of good new uh, young people uh, doing new research. And that is very, very encouraging. Yeah, the Asian Capitalisms uh, Network, actually, uh, it's more uh, Sebastian Lavachalier and uh, Cornelia Stortz and uh, Tobias Tenbrink, who are the um, masterminds of that network, but it parallels the growth of the Finance and Capitalism Network, that uh, it's, it's one of the largest networks in SASE now, and it started in about 2009 or 2010. And uh, it really draws in incredibly exciting uh, work by scholars from all over uh, the Pacific. So I just want to say that one of the one of our uh, new initiatives is the early career workshop and uh, where we bring in young scholars around finishing around the time when they finish the dissertation and we give extra um, uh, attention to the work and uh, they also get a chance to network with each other and I've been very excited about this. We, this, this was the second year that we did that and we hope to do this uh, in the future. Um, I think this is the best of times and the worst of times to be an economic sociologist, a social scientist in general, because uh, basically the world became a much, much more unpredictable place and lots of things that we took but that we had taken for granted for so many years now requires a re-examination. So I think anyone who has intellectual curiosity will find um, the current situation both very unsettling but at the same time very exciting. And I think it makes the, um, the conference a very exciting event because people not only in the context of the panels but just in the receptions and in the hallways, there's a lot of uh, great networking and animated uh, discussion going on about um, what you know, new kinds of ideas are and what sorts of theoretical streams are. I just had a conversation, ironically, with my colleague from <coughs> uh, the University of Chicago, Karen Norsatina, about the possibility of maybe um, having some uh, outreach on the part of SASE to the um, 4S uh, Association and maybe try to have some social studies of science stuff happen in SASE and explore some of the linkages between economic sociology and social studies of science. I think that would be really exciting and really interesting. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, work, interesting work being done both in Europe and in the United States on that, in that direction, so. Yeah, so you know, just as Gary says, the um, strength of, of, of our association is uh, basically um, breaking down uh, disciplinary barriers and bringing insights from further afield and sort of mixing things and uh, coming up with new ideas by uh, uh, connecting ideas from places like um, uh, the study of science and technology, mm -hmm. um, pol uh, political science, sociology, economics, uh, management, anthropology, management, management science. organization, law. I mean, SASE is quite unique in the, in the mix of disciplines that it brings 
together and uh, it really creates, uh, it doesn't really create a discipline on its own, but it creates a terrain upon which a lot of very innovative uh, work can be, uh, can be done. And, uh, you know, I think the fact that it's able to sort of recompose itself in, in a way like, you know, invent finance and uh, society, finance and capitalism, society. finance and society uh, and, you know, Asian capitalisms. And then we have a, a, a value to global value chains uh, uh, network, which is also very dynamic. That's been going on for the last four or five years. And, you know, I mean, it brings together um, and it brings theory. I think it's University of Chicago and it brings theory to uh, areas that have a lot of dynamic empirical work, but that, um, you know, are, you know, the people who are working in those areas are often in the interstices of their disciplines and so they're they're often eager to try to think outside of um, the boxes in which they are kind of forced to be in in their disciplinary well I just finished a book that's coming out you know July 10th with Campus Verlag on uh, German uh, multinationals and how they have globalized their production and we look at the way that uh, automobile and machinery companies set up their operations in Eastern Europe and in China and uh, how the multinational is changing to be able to govern the sort of transfer of organization of knowledge and technology across uh, all these different boundaries and, um, and kind of working n on some new projects looking at labor standards and sustainability uh, in, in the context of manufacturing and multinational corporations. So. Uh, I have just uh, recently published a book as, uh, with Alia Guseva on the um, on credit card markets, a historical comparative um, book on uh, post-communist uh, credit card market markets in nine, eight different countries. Um, and now my next project is about uncertainty and uh, human prediction uh, using algorithms and judgment. So that's...